Thank you, Thank you, Radhika. And uh, I wish to pay my humble respects. So my warm greetings to all of you. And I'm quite happy to be here for more than one reason. For young people, for politics, which is a, a very, very special interest to me about. Uh, I always tell people that like, be political and act politically and think about politics. So I'm, I'm quite happy for that. And also for the occasion, like the one hundred fifty birth anniversary of Mohandas Karachan Gandhi. And if you want, we could judge that by whether he's Mahatma or he's <laughs> Mr. Gandhi. That we would always debate it for. It's not right for me to say who he is, but certainly. And I, I quite kind of like, you know, quite inviting to this uh, conversation about what Radhika said as he, she, uh, she has literally moved the motion by saying that uh, Gandhi did use religion and religion and politics, the space in religion and politics, and particularly in a society like India. And I would, uh, I, I would put it in another way, in a sense that each of us have our own paradigm. I, I would think that like um, Gandhi is a very realized human. A self-realization is uh, one of his greatest achievements in his personal and political life. And uh, a realized self, or real, we, we often use the word realized soul, and which he was, and he continues to inspire millions of people in the world because of his self-realization. This is one I would like to make a, a, a strong uh, presentation about. And why he is a realized soul is that to the he spent the greatest part of his life and he tried to practice what he preached. And in a sense, it's like, you know, anybody who wants to practice what they preach or what they think, that's the path to self-realization. That's the path to realization. I think no politician in this world, I mean, Gandhi is also a politician for excellence, never keep that factor about Gandhi uh, because one of our failures in the post-independent politics is that we did not see Gandhi as a politician. We put him in a frame and put him on top of our offices and then we just worshipped and printed his picture in the currencies and coins and but in political things that he spoke, he practiced, was kept in the shelf. So like, but then we said in the, in the mid 70s and mid 80s, like, and mid 80s I was at the university as a student. I spent all my life in the universities after 14, and I'm then still in the university. So why I say this that, like, people in the universities said Gandhi is not relevant in the 1970s. This is about like, you know, 20, 20, 20 years later. Gandhi is no longer relevant. What are you talking about, Gandhi? And then in the 80s, people said that, like, you know, Gandhi is not relevant. In the 90s, people stopped talking about Gandhi. And uh, excepting in Gandhi and, like, you know, the Gandhi centers, Gandhi and research areas. So this also had a kind of a political uh, a connotation and, uh, of who Gandhi was, who Gandhi is to the political establishment. And by 2000, and particularly after 2010, 14, and 19, and Gandhi revived himself. Today, in this country, there is no politician, there is no leader that is more relevant to Indian politics, Indian society, than Gandhi today. Because like, you know, he has revived himself, and that's the power of Gandhi. This is something I want to say. And then about like, you know, when I, when Radha mentioned about like, you know, I, I really appreciate when she said, yes, Gandhi used pop religion. 
And uh, I, I like to mention it this way, that you know, in the society like Indian society, where like it is the uh, people culture, and for me that in what India is also, it's not a political project. India per se is not a political project. Anybody says India is a political project and we have to be very nationalistic. But India is a cultural project. India is a cultural project from the tip of the south, from the Cape Palmerin to uh, Kashmir, right into Kashmir and beyond in Afghanistan. And what this cultural project is not simply because you have to be a Hindu, you have to be a Muslim, you have to be a Parsi, you have to be a Christian, you have to be Muslim, you have to be other religion. But being part of the cultural fabric is that which is historical as well as prehistorical. And Gandhi felt, Gandhi kind of understood this cultural component. And Gandhi fell in line with this cultural component. And then, like he, at the time, like in 1920s when he came to, he comes back very actively after being in South Africa and comes into the Indian politics. I have to say why Gandhi is more political than religious is that only one aspect that when the leaders of India, whether it's uh, Gokhale or other leaders and mentors of Gandhi ask him that you take over the presidency of the Indian National Congress. But Gandhi said, very interestingly said, I need time. I need time and to know my people and their nature and their culture. I have to re-educate myself. I've been away from this country. And then he made a complete distinction between the class of leaders who exist at this time, right from the Adabai Nauroji from 1885 to 1915 to Modilal Nehru and many other class, Gokhale, Tilaka, and many other leaders who exist in the Indian national movement. But what he says, he did not take it up. Then the reason that he chose Champaran as a, a place that he wanted to launch the movement was that purely humanity. He did not launch his politics in Ayodhya. He did not launch it in Kashi. He did not launch it in Rameshwar. He did not launch it in any other place. But he launched it in the poorest of the poor people. And the most exploited sections of the Indian society were living, the Indigo farmers. And then, but like, you know, at his personal self, like, you know, every day that, you know, he believed in himself, in his own dharma. In his own dharma, that like, you know, the Vaishnava, what he believed in this, the sect he belonged. That's one of the criticism about Gandhi also, that religion. But he kept saying that is my personal belief. That he kept saying that is my personal belief. But that is also like, you know, in the larger mobilization, and wherever he did his evening prayers, the songs that were played of the Vaishnava Dharma, the songs were played. And in the process, what happened is that that it got activated into the national discourse, the mass mobilization. It got activated in the national discourse. At the same time, like in India, there were many other projects, like what you consider as the uh, the two nation theory that came in. But it's only about like you know, Gandhi being seen. Gandhi being seen as a kind of a, uh, the Hindu, the champion of uh, the Hindu social system, was due to the not because of the contradictions in Gandhi, but it was because of the contradictions in the Indian society, the caste system. And the caste system is that like you know, he could not absorb himself out of the caste system, so he bitterly fought for a position of reconciliation and then like you know he is divided, he is broken. Gandhi does not come out completely clean through the debate with Ambedkar. And the Gandhi does not come completely through the debate with the two nation theory because of what ha what's happening in the larger realm of the Indian polity. And so therefore I would say that like you know the political factor is a, a very very uh, higher portion to Gandhi's uh, personal self-realization and in, in terms of religion, he is also the victim of the Indian polity and Indian society. I mean like you know this is the, uh, I mean more than he is 
advocating the polarization in the Indian society and if I get into the dynamics of Indian society, which is very, uh, what you call, very casteist, very discriminatory, very oppressive. Gandhi did not say you discriminate this person, but everyone else was discriminating. He was poorly disposed towards making kind of a reconciliation through this process. I mean, the first incident that when you come to Sabarmadi, and after coming back from South Africa is that one, you have to clean your own toilet. And when he tells all his disciples and friends and everybody and agrees with him, but his wife asks him, do you want me to do that as well? Gandhi, you also want me to do that because she didn't think that it is meant for her or for anyone else. What I'm trying to say is not in, I'm not finding fault with her. Like Kasturipa, uh, I'm trying to find, like you know, even the personal, the partner of Gandhi could not reconcile to the idea that she had to go and clean the toilet that they were using. And then about the caste system, our Indian society is, is a very uh, highly oppressive society. It's a society without justice. Not this injustice is not just come about in. Uh, under the years time. This has come about in 5,000 and more years of time. This is not only because of Brahminical. I don't say that it is only the Brahminical. If the whole system is oppressive, right in the middle, right at the bottom, there is discrimination even at the bottom, one upon the other. So in this society to try and to bring about some reconciliation is that and Gandhi to the best of his like, realization and to justice that he had. And there are many faults that we can talk about. I am not here to cover Gandhi for his faults, but I am explaining about, like, you know, in, in concepts like uh, religious societies, but we, in the Hindu society, there is no concept like what you call Rajkarega Khalsa. Like, you know, there is no concept, with it, but then you have a Kshatriya concept. You have a Kshatriya concept, then you have a kind of the other, the power structures that you have in the Hindu society. So you have what you call this power phenomenon in the society is that, like you know, Gandhi had to weed through this kind of contradictions. And for to sum up uh, my initial presentation is that my teacher, who is a Thai Chinese who lives in uh, he was, he's, uh, he has won the alternative Nobel Prize and uh, of Right Life Award. At one time we were arguing. And he's a Gandhian. He's a Gandhian. And he, uh, we were arguing about uh, Gandhi. And he said to me that, like, you know, if Gandhi was not pushed out of the train in Peter Marisburg in South Africa, you Indians would not have got freedom. He said that in satire. But I want to say, I, I told him, I told him, sir, you're wrong. Because it doesn't take one Gandhi to get the freedom of India. It takes millions of Gandhis. So like, you know, in the politicization and in the religious, the process of the kind of religious divide and then the trappings of the two nation theory and then all this kind of like, you know, and the social polarization in the Hindu society and put Gandhi in, in a kind of perspective where he was highly doubted his integrity, his commitment and his vision. But I want to say one aspect is that when India, in the process of becoming free and independent India, Gandhi lost all his relevance, even to the Indian National Congress. Gandhi was defeated repeatedly in many resolutions of the Indian National Congress in 1947. And then, like, you know, people told, all those who just said to Gandhi that, like, you know, Mahatma leaders, in 1947, they told him, Gandhi, Babu, you are wrong. You don't understand the dynamics of modern politics. This is between 1937 to 47. When India became free, people said to Gandhi, you don't understand politics. When India was yet to be free, they told him to lead us to freedom. So, like, you know, by 19, about, like, you know, Gandhi said in there were, there's a very interesting article I would uh, request you to read. Is that an article uh, by E.M.S. Nambudiri Park, 
He and the Snabudiri part was a communist right from its beginning and to us that one of the remarkable leaders of post-independent India. And he and the Snabudiri part said in 1947 and then there were only two opposition leaders that are responsible for the democracy, the surviving democracy in India is that he said one is Mr. Gandhi. Gandhi became an opposition leader in 1947 itself. 1947 itself he became an ER asked Congress to be disbanded, which no congressman wanted to do, including Mr. Nehru. And then he became the opposition leader. What should be done with Pakistan? What should be done with the communal issues in this country? And like, you know, on the borders between Western, in Western India, between India and Pakistan, you have the complete troops being deployed. Then virtually you have more than 3 million people it's on record. Three and more than ten, I, I'm ashamed to say more number. But at the time of the independence, like you know, ten million people, seven million people were killed and people are moving across. And both the armies of India and Pakistan were stationed. People are killed. Here in Naukali, there is only one man, you count how many people were there. Only one man in Naukali. So this is uh, the factor about him. And then he said about like, you know, Gandhi became an opposition leader. And another person he mentioned is that for responsibility for the plurality, diversity, debate on democracy is that another person was Ive Ram Swami. And which Indian, the larger Indian audience never recognized it. They always see it, saw it, continue to see it as a dissident, as a kind of a, another entity who talked about other politics. But without these people in India today, we would not be talking about so much of space and democracy. So Gandhi is, like, you know, is a self-realized and uh, his relevance is far more today than in 1947. Thank you very much.